working double after double after double because they're so short staffed but they don't have the option they don't have the luxury to just put in immediate resignation because they felt like they were being exploited and you know not feeling safe it made you just feel like you were in prison or something like while you were working there most people are getting paid like what four or five dollars an hour plus tips but like they have to rely on the tips for the most part I feel like restaurants, they could toss more money just hourly to employees, but decide not to just to, you know, try to cut costs here and there, try to make as much, much profit as they can. You know, we are on the steps of a union that over the course of 118 years has helped millions of workers have economic stability in their lives and a voice on the job. But today, we gather on the Teamster steps because for far too many, the dreams unions make possible are increasingly out of reach. We gather on these steps because thanks to outdated labor laws, this dream has never been a reality for millions in this country, especially for black, brown, immigrant, women, and queer workers. Despite fighting for unions in large numbers, far too many barriers prevent workers from achieving that dream. As a native of North Carolina, I know this struggle well. This is the problem that we are urging Congress to address today. Millions of workers are not allowed to organize and have a lack of voice on the job. They can't form or join a union in spite of their best efforts. Too often when we're trying to organize to secure higher wages or protect ourselves and coworkers from discriminatory bosses or simply trying to ensure that we work in safe and healthy workplaces, we face retaliation. Companies cut wages, they cut hours, they threaten or intimidate those who speak up, they fire us simply for wanting a voice and the ability to determine our economic future or even just the basic conditions of a place to, where we spend the bulk of our time, which is at work. That's because current American labor law is heavily unbalanced in favor of employers. It gives them the ability to fire us with impunity. All it takes is a few workers talking to each other about improving wages or working conditions. Just ask the countless Amazon warehouse workers who have been fired for doing just that. This Halloween, it's not all costumes that many of us are frightened by. Too many workers have the daily horror of going to work in a toxic workplace. Going to work knowing that you can be fired just for trying to improve things is actually terrifying. Thousands of workers across the country are making this point loud and clear, walking out because why work if you're going to be forced into financial insecurity, especially while executives make record profits? You've seen the memes, you've seen the tweets, people are dubbing this mass movement of worker walkouts as striketober, like the congressman just mentioned, but let's be clear, this isn't a joke. It's not fun to strike, it's not cute. Workers are putting their lives and their livelihoods on the line to not only demand dignity for themselves, but to also build a wall for all of us against exploding inequality. They are fighting for all of us. Striking is something you do when your employer gives you no other option. And for millions of workers, that's what they're doing during this strike over. So I want to thank you all for coming out and helping us push Congress to pass the PRO Act. This is the one thing that we, this is just one beginning that we can do in order to expand the right to organize. This is the first step, thank you, very sweet. This is the first step that we can do in order to rebalance our economy in a way that works for all of us. This is the only thing that will keep us from stopping to take direct action. They may say it's striketober, but striketober will not end on October 31st. Now hopefully you've seen our moving billboard here circling a couple of times. I'm hoping it's actually gonna move around, right? Uh, around, the, around the block so everyone can see it. Because workers have been telling us their stories for months, and we decided to bring their stories to D.C. so that Congress could actually see them. So many people who go to work in that building across the street in Congress, they say they, they are they're for working people. They say they support us. They say they fight for us. But their job is easy. They can say they support workers from the floor of the House or the Senate, on the campaign trail, in a tweet or a TV ad, but those words don't help a fired mother get her lights turned back on. They don't help parents choose between food and medical care for their children. 
They don't help seniors without union retirement benefits pay for their prescription medication. Words without actions ring hollow for the millions upon millions of workers who struggle to make ends meet or who struggle to stay safe on the job, even long before the COVID-19 pandemic. Working people are sick and tired of living in fear that they may lose their job for speaking out or wanting to organize to negotiate what is possible at work. That's right. Members of Congress, however, the only day they live in fear of being fired is on election day. We all deserve to work without fear, just as they do. If they are for working people, they must fight to pass the Protect the Right to Organize Act, the PRO Act. I'm gonna end with this, and Representative Norcross said it before me, and I'm so glad he did. Democracy is not only about mobilizing the majority to make decisions on election day. It's also anchored in the ability to organize the majority of people in our economy to have a voice at work and throughout their economic lives. The PRO Act is another step, an important step, in strengthening our democracy. So that said, I want to thank everyone who came out and spoke today, especially those of you who dressed up in costumes, or even those of you who were just dressed as workers who were horrified by the state of the economy. In 1985, I lied about my age to get into a truck diner, making only two thirty-five an hour. And yet here it is 35 years later, and I'm only making two eighty-three an hour. That is only 50 cents more. I have to depend on tips. But it's hard to get those tips when everything is against you. First, I have to give over 25% of my tips to other employees in the restaurant in a process called tipping out. This is an illegal process in most states, but because it's done in cash and most people don't know about it, they get away with it. Well, it's my great pleasure now to introduce a great worker, organizer of One Fair Wage, who's experienced some of the issues that you're seeing right now on that truck as well. Uh, at her workplace to talk about why the PRO Act is so important. So please welcome Pam Ariza. My name is Pam, and I am with One Fair Wage, fighting to end minimum wage in addition to the lack of resources and true protections for American workers. I'm here to support the PRO Act. I've been affiliated with One Fair Wage since my employment with Darden, the nation's largest restaurant employer, ended. It was at the Capitol Grove Grill here in Washington, D.C., where my 20-plus year career ended for speaking up about the discrimination, harassment, retaliation that I endured since transferring from Naples, Florida in 2017. The transfer should have been the pinnacle of my long successful career with Darden, but by no fault of my own, I was forced out of the company. I did walk away with my self-respect and dignity and continue to try to fight so that our voices are heard and Darden can be held accountable as a nation's leader in the hospitality industry. Over the last 30 years, Working in this industry, I have seen firsthand the policies that left restaurant workers uninsured, underpaid. Every worker was made to feel replaceable. Companies began investing less and less in the workers. No sick pay, no grievance procedures, no health insurance, retirement plans, job security on top of lack of even a living wage. I gave 20 plus years to Darden, and not to mention countless blood, sweat, and tears and still the managers made sure my schedule only added up to a certain amount of hours so they didn't have to offer me health insurance. I got scheduled in what was considered the least desired section in the restaurant every shift. They controlled who sat in my section and essentially how much I made. I stood my ground and spoke up. I followed the chain of command to the highest level. Standing up and encouraging my coworkers to follow my lead helped to out a corrupt, toxic, white male server that had tormented others for over a decade before I arrived at this location. An internal investigation done by Darden in April 2020 found in my favor. Darden stated I did nothing wrong was entitled to my job. The problem with that is that the same manager who actively retaliated against me was given the power to decide who returned to work on pure personal bias, not on merits, on work ethic or performance. In the end, speaking up, cost my, my job, and the pandemic gave Darden the perfect excuse to furlough me and eventually terminate me, along with thousands of others, at the end of October 2020. 
I also sought help from EEOC and Department of Labor and Wages. The backlog and ability for these agencies to truly help seems very slow and cumbersome. If we had a union, Darden could have been more could have been held more accountable for their deceptive and exploiting tactics. Now the pandemic has us even more exploited than before. Overnight, we are frontline essential workers in extremely dangerous conditions with no adjustment in compensation or protections in place. We need an organized labor to take on management and get these issues addressed. The only way to achieve this is through the passage of the PRO Act and pass the Raise, Raise, Raise the Wage Act, which includes one fair wage. This will allow us workers to stand together in solidarity for our rights and that we deserve and be paid a full fair wage. Thank you for your time. It's an environment where you're pretty much powerless as an employee, um, like it's an at-will job. My name is Sarah David Heideman. I work at an organization called the National Women's Law Center. We fight for gender justice in the courts, in public policy, in our society, working across the issues that are central to women and girls. I am also a proud bargaining committee member of NWLC United, our newly formed staff union, affiliated with the nonprofit professional employees union, IFPET, IFPTE Local 70. My message today is simple. Unions are good for women. Unions are key for protecting and strengthening women's rights in the workplace. And that is why I'm so proud to be here today to support the Protecting the Right to Organize Act a bill that creates pathways to union representation and strengthens labor law for millions of workers. Congress must pass the Protecting the Right to Organize Act without delay. Thank you so much to our champions on the Hill, especially to Senator Murray, Congressman Garcia, and Norcross. We really appreciate your support. We cannot do this without you. Almost half of all union members are women. What workers win in collective bargaining is absolutely critical for achieving gender justice higher and more equal pay, the ability to report health and safety concerns, fight back against discrimination, access to affordable health benefits and paid sick days, and so much more. Women struggle to make ends meet in this country. One in six low-paid workers across the country are women. But unions can help. Unionized Latinas make 40% more per week than Latina non-union workers. Unionized black women make 24% more per week than black women non-union workers. Union pay transparency interrupts a culture of secrecy around pay that makes it extremely difficult for individual workers to discover pay discrimination. Without collective union negotiation power, women can fall behind and wage gaps widen. It is no secret to anyone here that women have borne the brunt, and particularly women of color, have borne the brunt of the COVID-19 pandemic, from job losses to precarious and dangerous working conditions as essential and frontline workers. But unions improve safety for workers and for patients. In a recent study of nursing homes in New York, homes with healthcare worker unions had greater access to personal protective equipment and saw 30%, 30% fewer deaths from COVID-19 compared to facilities without unions. Unions negotiate health benefits with employers that are more likely to be accessible and affordable for working women, especially for family health coverage. In 2019, 84% of unionized workers participated in employer-sponsored health care plans, compared with only 54% for non-union workers. That's a huge difference. And unions are also a powerful force for good beyond traditional bargaining over wages and working conditions. Collective bargaining agreements provide avenues for preventing, addressing, and reporting employer wrongdoing, and significantly more protection from firing and retaliation. This is incredibly important when fighting back against discrimination at work. Right now, across the country, workers are taking to the streets and striking for working conditions they deserve. Striketober is in full swing. Just two days ago, McDonald's workers in 12 cities walked off the job to protest ongoing sexual harassment and violence in the company's stores. Can we hear it for workers walking off their jobs, striking all over the country for union power? Yes, thank you. 
Now Congress needs to do its part, and we're gonna support you and push you. Pass laws that will support organizing for women and all working people. We need the protect, Protecting the Right to Organize Act, and we need it now. Thank you so much. Under the PRO Act, progressive labor legislation stalled in the Senate. The concept of, quote, at will employees that can be fired for made up reasons or no reason at all, that ends. It's great to be here, or should I say, it's great to be back here in front of Teamsters International because it's where I started. First of all, Erica, thank you for that kind, uh, very kind introduction. And my apologies to everybody for being late. Uh, we're doing a little something over here, like trying to get built back better and the infrastructure deal done. So big things are going on there. And in there, the enforcement issues for the PRO Act, which is the basis for so much of what we're doing today. Uh, first of all, to President Hoffa to be in front of the Teamsters. It's great to be back. I mean, I got all kinds of notes and nice policy things. Let me tell you who I am. I'm an electrician by trade, and I'm proud of that. They like to say there's 213 lawyers, nothing against lawyers, but there's only one electrician, one painter, and one iron worker that served in the halls of Congress. So why do I bring that up? Yeah, we can hear it. New Jersey electrician, that's good. It's about diversity of backgrounds, your experiences. I'm 40 plus years a member of IBW. I've been representing workers since I've been an electrician. I was a single dad trying to raise a kid. That was not easy going through apprenticeship. But those are the experiences that are so valuable when we talk about representing workers. You know, I feel like I'm in costume today. I'm better in a pair of jeans and a t-shirt working down at the chemical plant along the river in uh, Paulsboro or somewhere in my district. You know, those are the folks that we are literally standing here today because of. Those workers who went to work in a pandemic so we could eat, so we could live, keep the lights on, all those things come in, going down to the port. You know, you were talking about earlier, speaker of how many people have died, union versus non-union, and how much better those safety measures are. Well, that all starts with a voice in the workplace. And that's what the PRO Act is about. Leveling the playing field. We don't want it all in favor of workers, and we certainly don't want it all in favor of the owners. But together, that's what makes America great, that we both invest and we both grow together. But there's been a little problem. We all work together, but when the money comes out, it starts to diverge. You know, you go back 30 to 50 years and look at the difference between what the owners or management was making and the average worker, they both rose together. But over the course of the last 25 years, we've been stagnant, workers, and the incremental growth of those who own it. That's not the way the table was set in this great country. That we work hard, we put our lives on the line, and you get all the benefits. It's supposed to be fairly distributed. So, I've been at the National Labor Relations Board. I've been there trying to organize workers. I know how unfair it is, because you hire the lawyers, they delay, they delay, they delay. And if they do get hit with the penalty, it's almost nothing to them. It is worth the price of what they pay. You can have an electoral democracy in way our nation without an economic democracy. They go hand in hand. And that is what is so important. So for all those workers out there, and I'll just bring you one example of the transport workers, particularly in the northern part of the state where that's pandemic hit first. I live right across from Philadelphia. Those union bus drivers were in Petri dishes. We didn't know about how that work in the air was being stripped for COVID. So they went to work so workers could get to work. Without transportation, it doesn't happen. And they had some of the highest death rates in our country to help other people get to work. So for all those who worked in the pandemic, 
particularly where I come from, the construction industry, it's tough to work from home. Although my wife's got plenty of work for me. The NORB has to be reset in a fairness model. And that's what the PRO Act did. Because we in the House passed it 234 days ago. 234 days ago, overwhelmingly passed out of the House. We love our friends in the Senate. We're just encouraging them to get past that 60 vote rule because if it was put to a vote today, it would pass. And there's a guy who lives right down the street, that White House, who will sign the PRO Act. So to my brothers and sisters who are out there working, particularly during the pandemic, we want to thank you for what you've done. You've literally helped us to keep our country running so people can live. To those who are struggling for a voice on the job, it's something we now affectionately refer to as Strike Tober. As somebody who has walked his share picket line, a strike in many ways is the last resort. We don't like them, but when you get pushed to a point, that's your voice, a strike is. So for all those workers, whether it's my IBW brothers and sisters right here in Virginia, who didn't go on strike, but were locked out by DuPont. Locked out. They didn't walk off the job, they got thrown off the job. This is the problem with the National Labor Relations Act. We want a level playing field for everyone. So that tide that raises all boats, takes workers with it. Thank you very much. In order for workers' rights to be protected, these companies have to have a penalty. The only thing that these companies care about is profits. So if you really want to get their attention and make sure that workers' rights are being protected, we need to pass the PRO Act and make sure that these companies have a penalty for violating workers' rights. Workers should have the ability to form unions so that they can finally have economic justice in this country. And you as our senators have the power to do that now by passing the PRO Act. You know, this pandemic has made it crystal clear our economy is not working for everyone. It's benefiting the wealthiest people and the biggest corporations, and it's failing our workers. The top 1% has seen their wages grow by 205% in the midst of a pandemic, while working families are stuck with stagnant wages. CEO pay has skyrocketed so much that some of them are even taking joyrides into space. While workers, meanwhile, are in the country are struggling to make ends meet, to pay their rent, and to put food on the table. Workers pay suffers without strong protections to make sure everyone has a voice in the workplace. And that's not all. Workplace safety and health violations go unreported for fear of retaliation. Sexual harassment continues without consequence, especially for workers who rely on tips for wages, like folks in our restaurant. And on top of all of this, too many workers have to go without the benefits that we all need to thrive, like a secure pension, paid leave to take care of themselves and our loved ones. Fair hours and a consistent schedule. All of this hurts workers of color and women the most. This young man deserves a lot better. And you know what? These workers disproportionately have jobs with lower wages and fewer of any benefits and are more likely to face sexual harassment in the workplace. And when they speak up to demand fair working conditions, they are more likely to experience unjust consequences. For too many workers, going to work every day means putting up with diseases like COVID, dangerous working conditions, harassment, and even reprisal when they speak up. It does not have to be this way. We can help address this rampant inequality. And we can restore fairness to our economy by making sure that workers can join and form a union and bargain for fair wages and benefits and working conditions. We can ensure that workers are not only getting the benefits and working conditions that they deserve, but are also getting a fair share of the economic 
growth that they are driving. I am fighting to make progress as soon as we can in Build Back Better. It is long past time we crack down on corporations who violate workers' right to organize. Right now, there is virtually no accountability when corporations union bust or retaliate against workers. So we are working hard to make sure they pay the price for labor violations, just as they would for breaking any law. But of course, we will keep fighting to get all of the PRO Act signed into law. Because as everyone in the labor movement knows, the PRO Act is the most significant worker empowerment legislation since the Great Okay, my phone is up there. It will make it easier for workers to organize, strengthen their ability to bargain collectively, and close loopholes in our labor laws that leave too many workers unprotected. Workers are fighting so hard across this country for the fair wages, safe workplaces, and respect that they deserve. I am determined to stand with them and make sure the PRO Act gets signed into law. Thank you so much for having me. President Hoffa of the Teamsters, president of the Teamsters for over 20 years and a longtime champion for working people. We're so happy to have him today. President Hoffa. Uh, we want to express our complete support for the PRO Act, uh, which has passed the House, and it's very, very important that this happens for organized labor. We talk about income inequality in America. The answer is the way to fix income inequality is to let unions organize. And the PRO Act does exactly that. Let's people organize. It does what we have been talking about for years in one bill. And it's already passed the House, and now it's moving on to the Senate. We are working very hard because this is what we need, a right to have card check. Let people organize without fear, without fear of being fired. And also on union busters, increasing fines dramatically, dramatically. Also, OSHA violations, increasing fines on those people. We have to find ways to make it so we have teeth in the law so people won't violate things that are so important to basically things that we accept. We cannot have any more of this violations that slap on the wrist. We've also got to make sure that people who are fired for organized activity have a fast way to get back to work. They can't be hung out without pay for a year. It's the standard tactic of the major companies out there that are fighting unions at all times. This is a great bill, and it's a bill that's finally time has come. This is something we dreamed about going back to EFTA. And years ago, we talked about EFTA. This is the new EFTA. This is what we need to make sure organized labor gets going. If you want to end income inequality in America, turn unions loose. We will fix inequality in this America and make it a fair place for all of us. That is what we're here for. We're so proud of what we've done. We're so proud of the people in the House that have passed this bill. Many, many Republicans joined us. We're so proud to have Senator Patty Murray here supporting this bill. Uh, there's tremendous support for this bill right now, and we're at the cusp of getting this done. So these are great times. This is a great opportunity for all of us. On to victory. Get it done. Thank you so much.